insulation of a conductor degrades over time. That is why we practice insulation tests with respect to ground on board. Today I will be showing you how to locate a low insulation in your switchboards. But before we start, let me show you first why is it important to locate and isolate any low insulation in your system. Let me give you this example. These are pilot lamps with rated voltage of 28 volts. I have connected 4 of them in series with a single phase power supply of 100 volts. You can see that the light is lighting normally at this voltage. I measured the current and it is 165 milliamps. Let us say that this green and yellow wire is ground. I have a low insulation in one of the phases. Watch what will happen if I have a low insulation but this time in between the four lamps. Now two of my lamps have been busted. I am going to give you another example and explain. What I have here is a three-phase motor connected to three-phase power supply. Let's say my T-phase is grounded with 0 ohms reading on the main switchboard low insulation monitor. And my motor's bearing cover fell off and comes in contact in between the windings of the motor and the casing. Now current will flow higher with less resistance. Now there's a greater chance that your U-winding will be burned. So to answer the question, why is it important to isolate any low insulation in your electrical system is to ensure flawless operation and prevent machineries from being damaged. So we have this low insulation on our 100 volts sub switchboard since our voyage going to this port. It is complicated to troubleshoot low insulation while the main engine is running since you will be switching off most of the breakers in the switchboard. You will never know you might cause the main engine to stop or worse, a blackout. The best place to troubleshoot this kind of trouble is at Anchorage. The next best place is at port, provided there's no operation. I have already informed the crew and officers ahead of time that I will be switching off all the power supply in our lights and power outlets. I start by switching off all breakers on the switchboard. Then I switch the breakers one by one and record the reading on the insulation monitor. I have confirmed that I have multiple low insulations on this switchboard. But in this video, I am just gonna focus locating the lowest insulation on the switchboard. The low insulation is located on L3 light distribution board. I have switched on all the breakers back to normal in the sub switchboard. I have instructed the duty oiler to closely observe the low insulation monitor if there's any movements. On the light distribution board, it is the same process again. Every circuit breaker must be switched off and switched on one by one. Okay, kopya, kopya. The circuit breaker E has the low insulation. Then I switch off all the loads of the circuit breaker E, which is in the officer's mess room. In the electrical diagram, you can see that the loads are lights, TV, stereos, and speakers. I have switched off and disconnected them all, but still no luck. I begin to suspect that the low insulation is within the conductors. So I isolate circuit breaker E, then disconnected all conductors connected in this junction, so I can measure the line to ground insulation one by one. I used an insulation tester to measure resistance of each conductor with respect to ground. 
I have selected 250 volts since the voltage used in this conductor is only 100 volts. I connected a black lead to the ground and check if I have a good ground. Before measuring any resistance, make sure that there's no power in the conductor. Then I measured resistance of each conductor. I have located the conductor which has the low insulation but I have no idea which wire it belongs. So I connected all the good conductors and isolate the bad conductors. Then I switch on the power for circuit breaker E and check which load has no power. All the lights are still working, so that means that the conductor supplying the TV has the low insulation. Now my job here is to isolate it and the next electrician can replace it. I hope you learned something from this video. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next time.